here we are. We've done a lot of work. We've worked really hard on our animal reports. And now it's time to think about all the hard work we did and think about some of the learning that happened. Think about all the things you had to do to get those fabulous reports. First of all, I want us to think about what you learned during the research process. We started it, um, the first grade teachers, I already knew they were going to do a nonfiction uh, writing piece and they had decided to do animals. Um, I knew the Blabberize program would just fit beautifully with it. And so I thought, well, let them choose their animal. First of all, give them choice. That is very important. Um, so I, I had a whole bunch of books and I put them out on the table and I said that we had a whole um, choosing session. So the kids came in and they got to pick the animal they were really interested in. I told them to go with something that they wanted to learn about and they were curious about. The Blabber Rise was such an awesome, it was such an awesome project and what it did was it helped them because first of all, they had to learn as much as possible about their animals to be able to share. I am an owl. I am a bird and can be found on all continents except Antarctica. Some of the most common types include the barn owl, the screeching owl, and the short eared owl. I am nocturnal and can be any color from white to pink, gray, or brown. So like she could imagine that. So that kind of grabbed your attention, didn't it? Yeah, yeah those, are, those are really interesting words to put in your report. Um, just kind of taking a breath, stepping back, and just looking at what we've accomplished, each one of them, and celebrating that. Um, I think, too, when you're talking about 21st century learning skills, we can't focus only on the end product or what has come out of it. I think we need to celebrate and look at all those small moments uh, as they've worked through the process. I, look at their, um, I looked at their graphic organizers. I was blown away by some of the notes they took and how they wrote them in their own words and first grade spelling. Um, you, know, you can see that they wrote them down. We talked about having ownership of your notes, um, making sure that you write things down you understand, you can explain and defend to somebody um, that are in your words. <laughs> Couldn't find enough information? So the different circles helped you to... What did you use the circles for? She didn't say I, I, I. She kept... She did use her... She did creative stuff with her words. She didn't just say I. Yeah, no, no, no. Those are just suggestions I make. I mean, oh, then you as an artist can take them or not. Very little of the work I do is independent, unless it's for like assessment purposes. Um, so they, a big part of the workshop model that I use is that they are, that I'm giving a short mini lesson, they're working in groups collaborating. Collaboration is a process, I think, that has to grow between two teachers that or however many are collaborating it's not something you can just say okay now we're going to collaborate it's a real learning process and a coming to be comfortable and understanding our roles and working together till it's almost seamless and i think that's where megan and i are now we've been working together for about three years they do better in the computer lab collaborating than they do in the regular classroom um, they get a little more antsy in the regular classroom so i think the i don't know whether it's the the technology piece that's been helping them, but definitely they, they rely on each other and they seem to, to be um, more willing to accept advice from another person when they're um, in the computer lab. The thing I'll say about when you have a, a system like that, I think systems are about relationships. And so when you can have a, a system that's stable enough to foster those relationships, that's when you can have this kind of teaching and learning. And I think so often one of the, the issues that we have, I think, in public education is not just the mobility of the students, but that of the teachers, too. For who they are. I have one philosophy for this life. It is to accept people for who they are. I believe in accepting people for who they are. To me, if a person is black, white, brown, gay, or straight, yellow with polka dots, or even just straight up crazy, I believe in just letting people live their lives. All right.
This video presents examples of promising classroom practices in 21st century learning. We at the Council on 21st Century Learning have been engaged in lively conversations with educators across Colorado and beyond about transforming K-12 education. This video extends that conversation, moving from abstract ideas to concrete examples. It's easy to talk about the need for change, but far more difficult to actually create the change from schooling to learning. We see that change occurring, and we can learn from those who are leading the way. These examples come from the Colorado school districts of Aurora, Colorado Springs, and Denver. We refer to the practices as promising because they demonstrate progress toward 21st century learning. Like the practitioners themselves, we think they could be better still. We hope that you will find them useful as you consider your own efforts.